I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and all the shit you don't do Well I'ma make hella shit that I don't become you I have no regrets, yeah I'll tied up my chest I'll never forget what it's like to be in debt Been stabbed in the back bed, I'll show you what happens Pass me the mic and I'll show you with action I feel this pain, you already know Turn that to gains, let my money show I've got these things that I can't let go Watch me turn this life into something that you could never own I feel this pain, you already know Turn that to gains, let my money show I've got these things that I can't let go Watch me turn this life into something that you could never own It's Universe Mode Episode 20 And it's tonight where opportunity reigns supreme. Welcome inside the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view event. Tonight, two briefcases will hang above the ring and an ultimate opportunity hangs in the balance. And we're gonna kick things off with the women's Money in the Bank ladder match right here, right now in Philadelphia. Welcome to Universe Mode Episode 20, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe right here on the YouTube channel as we kick things off with six women competing for an opportunity at the Women's Championship in the future. The following contest is a six-woman ladder match making her way to the ring from Osaka, Japan, Osaka! Upon her return to Monday Night Raw, the Empress of Tomorrow was the very first person to qualify for the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match here tonight. Will Asuka get back to the top of the mountain in the WWE Women's Division? She has returned to in-ring action. She's a former NXT Women's Champion. Not just a former NXT Women's Champion, but quite possibly the most dangerous and dominant champion that brand has ever seen. A former Raw and SmackDown Women's Champion as well. Former Women's Tag Team Champion. And she is also a former winner of the Women's Money in the Bank ladder matchup. 2018 Royal Rumble match winner, the very first one for the women, was Asuka. She's had a decorated career in the WWE. She was the first person to qualify for this match, as we mentioned. But will Asuka be the one to retrieve that briefcase that is hanging above the ring here tonight? But our next participant, somebody who's been extremely impressive as of late, Shotzi has qualified for Money in the Bank, and she is looking to make a statement, looking to make a mark in her young career here this evening. And from Oakland, California, Shotzi! A former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion with another member of this contest here tonight, Ember Moon. Shotzi has been very impressive on the main roster as of late. We've talked about it a bunch, but she has two recent matches against the WWE Women's Champion, Bianca Belair. She was unsuccessful in both of them, but if you missed out, definitely go out of your way to watch Shotzi's contest with Bianca inside of the squared circle. Two fantastic matches and very impressive performances from the young upstart Shotzi here in the WWE. This is her first Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. And Shotzi, we know somebody with her attitude, with her anger, with her aggression inside the ring. It's going to be a very interesting dynamic to see this young woman in this ladder match this evening. And of course, it's going to be a stacked night of action as later tonight we will have the men's Money in the Bank ladder match as well. The first of two ladder matches here this evening on your second Universe Mode pay-per-view to date. WWE Money in the Bank. It's going to be an extraordinary night. Seven matches signed. Five championships to be decided. Thank you for joining us. And we're getting ready to kick things off in moments. Shotzi inside of the ring, our second combatant in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. And next up, another woman who has come new to the main roster as of late. One of the most impressive women we have on the WWE roster, Io Shirai. From Tokyo, Japan. When discussing former accolades, Io Shirai is a former NXT Women's Champion as well as a former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion. And she is quite possibly the most impressive and exciting and innovative woman in the women's division. 
We talked about it in her main roster debut against Mickey James a number of weeks back. That is how Io Shirai qualified for tonight's events. And we talked about it on main event this past week. Io Shirai with her innovative and high-flying style inside the squared circle. How is she going to fare when ladders are in play? It's going to be a very interesting dynamic. Let's see what this queen of the sky is able to think up in that mind of hers when you incorporate the ladders. Io Shirai, your next combatant in the women's Money in the Bank ladder matchup. But coming up next, the former NXT champions keep on rolling out as we have a former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion in her own right. One of the most dangerous and interesting women in the division. And also one of the most talented and hard-nosed. Candice LeRae is not afraid of a fight. And she's not afraid to get her hands dirty inside the square circle. Her ladder match is nothing new for her. And from Anaheim, California, Candice LeRae! A veteran of the ring throughout Candice LeRae's career inside the squared circle. She's known to get a little down and dirty inside of the ring. We've seen her, whether it's been in the WWE or out, rock the crimson mask in the past. Candice LeRae, a very dangerous woman and a very tough woman inside of the ring. She owns a victory in recent history over Bayley on WWE main event where she tapped out the decorated women's champion in her own right. So Candice LeRae, we know how impressive she can be and how tough she can be inside of the ring, but can she get the job done when the opportunity hangs above the ring here this evening? And speaking of NXT, women's champions, Shotzi's tag team partner, the woman she once held NXT Women's Tag Team Championship gold with, and one of the most impressive women today is in the ring. And from Dallas, Texas, You want to talk about innovative, exciting, and impressive talents inside the squared circle. Look no further than Ember Moon, a former NXT Women's Champion. And as we mentioned, a former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion with her partner who is across the ring from her tonight, Shotzi. Those two women used to being on the same side, even picking up a victory alongside Shayna Baszler in that six women tag team matchup on main event this past week. But tonight, it's all about going in alone. It's a singles opportunity for those two individual women. And we talked about what's Io Shirai going to do with her high-flying, exciting style when ladders are in play. What's Ember Moon going to do with her innovative style into play as well? So much talent, so much exciting superstars in this matchup. We got one more addition, and quite possibly the most dangerous addition to this matchup. The Queen of Spades is here. And from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Shayna Baszler. Queen Army, stand up. The Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, has arrived. We know her MMA background. We know how dominant she can be inside the squared circle. Shayna Baszler, one of the most impressive and dominating performers in the women's division today. Now entering this ladder match this evening. How are her MMA and submission style inside of the ring fair in this style of ladder matchup. Shayna is a former NXT Women's Champion, but she has never held the WWE Women's Championship on the main roster. Former Women's Tag Team Champion as well, but she's looking to get singles gold on her accolade here this evening. And it all starts by taking down the briefcase that hangs above the ring. The women's money in the bank. The briefcase hangs, the opportunity hangs in the balance. All six women have entered only one woman will leave Philadelphia, Pennsylvania this evening, holding that very briefcase and a shot at the Women's Championship anytime, any place for up to one year as things are underway here. And I expect a lot of carnage in this contest. Our first of two women's ladder matches here this evening. As you see all the women kind of squaring off in the early going. Meanwhile, Candice LeRae jumping to the outside, taking out Shayna Baszler. We're going to try to keep up with all the action here. We have women's tag team partners going at it. My God. In the first few minutes, every woman for herself in this one is Shotzi and Ember Moon not afraid to get their hands dirty with each other. And as we mentioned still to come tonight, the men's Money in the Bank ladder matchup is going to go down. Of course, in that contest, we have Samoa Joe, Damian Priest, Austin Theory, Mustafa Ali, Matt Riddle, and Edge. Can't wait to see which one of those six men pulls down the men's briefcase here this evening. 
But meanwhile, we got these six women in here right now, and I'm sure the WWE Women's Champion Bianca Blair, although she's got a total defense coming up later this evening against Rhea Ripley, and I'm sure she is laser focused on getting redemption on Rhea Ripley after the recent attacks on Monday Night Raw. I'm sure in the back of her head, and even though in the back of Rhea Ripley's head, they gotta have this women's money in the bank on their mind. Quite possibly whoever wins the briefcase here, they could cash in at any point. And that includes later tonight. An extra person eyeing your back. You gotta have extra eyes in your back after tonight when another person's coming for the championship as Asuka in the ring. Double hip attack on Candice LeRae and Ember Moon. Very impressive by the Empress of Tomorrow. And also still to come tonight, here on the pay-per-view, as we mentioned, Bianca Blair, Rhea Ripley for the Women's Championship. Rhea with a couple of attacks on Bianca the last few weeks. Bianca definitely won revenge over the number one contender for the championship gold. Plus the World Tag Team Championship is going to be on the line. Eric and Ivar defending against a team who owns a victory over the Viking Raiders. Danny Burke, Janoni Lorcan. Look to win the WWE World Tag Team Championships for the very first time. The Cruiserweight title going to be on the line this evening as the leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, defends against the number one contender, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Meanwhile, in the ring, Candice LeRae, I thought she was scaling the ladder there, but she saw Asuka about to come up for her. And Asuka takes down Candice, but she's got to watch her back. Ember Moon, the first to climb the ladder there, and they're going to be the first to try to get her hands on the briefcase. And it's all about pulling down that briefcase and earning yourself a future championship opportunity. Candice LeRae with the reverse run. You see all the women in the ring now scouring after Ember Moon. And Shotzi's the one to pull her down and power on her ass. What on the ladder. Absolutely brutal as this ladder match going to be as well as the one coming up later tonight. And also tonight, the Intercontinental Championship will be on the line. And the number one contender. The King of the Claymore, Drew McIntyre, is going to go one-on-one -on -one with the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus, for the Intercontinental Championship. And a great matchup that is going to be, plus the WWE Championship on the line tonight as well, as the phenomenal AJ Styles defends the title in a triple threat contest against the Prince Finn Balor, as well as the charismatic and even Jeff Hardy. All of that coming up here this evening in Philadelphia. As Shane and Oscar on the ladder, Milos. Candice LeRae pulls Shane off. Ember Moon's there to shove Asuka off the ladder. Asuka taking a fall. And I expect to see many of those in this contest. Ember Moon just took one a few minutes ago. Now Asuka eating the canvas from the distance. So much great talent inside of the ring. Going at each other is Io Shirai. Nice German suplex to Ember Moon. That's a one-on-one -on -one match I would love to see in the near future. Io and Ember Moon going at it. We got a couple of bodies laid on the outside here. Candice LeRae down and out. Shotzi's going after Io Shirai on the outside. Meanwhile, Shayna Baszler is looking to pass out Ember Moon inside the middle of the ring. You can't win the match this way, but you can definitely do some damage on your opponent this way. You pass out Ember Moon. Ain't no way she's going to be climbing the ladder. So smart strategy, in my opinion, from the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. As we mentioned, so much talent, so much uprising young talent in this matchup like Io and Shotzi and even Ember Moon who's been around for a couple of years but is still looking for that big opportunity. A lot of women in this match are really searching for opportunities that they have not gotten in their WWE career. A lot of these women impressed at NXT. Asuka probably the most, well, definitely the most decorated woman of the main roster out of all six of these women. A lot of just amazing talent looking to get a, an opportunity they've been searching for for a while here. One of them is going to walk out with that opportunity here this evening. The future WWE Women's Championship matchup. And they'll be able to cash in that contract at any time, any place for up to one year inside that square circle. It happened here tonight at Money in the Bank. This match is opening up the show. Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley are going to be out there later for the Women's Championship. Well, whoever wins this Women's Money in the Bank match, if they're still standing after the fact, just may have their eye on walking out of tonight as the women's champion. You never know with the Money in the Bank contract. The ladders are falling all over the place here. We got bodies falling all over the place. Candace taking out, or excuse me, Ember Moon inside of the ring. Candace takes down Shayna Baszler. We're in the ring right now. Look at this going after the Empress of Tomorrow. Asuka, a nice drop kick to the back. Candace LeRae momentarily showing some dominance. There's Asuka. One of the most dominant women 
in the history of not just NXT, but the WWE. The Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, returning to in-ring action on the Raw after Backlash a couple of weeks ago. She went one-on-one -on -one with Naomi in the very first Women's Money in the Bank qualifying matchup, where she was, of course, successful on that night. And a very exciting and impressive matchup by both women, but, of course, Asuka walking out with the victory. Asuka now looking to set up the ladder. That's what it's all about. It's climbing that ladder. The objective is, is clear, but it's hard to complete. Easier said than done. And knock down five other women and make sure nobody's left standing for you able to climb the ladder. And Asuka making sure Shayna Baszler ain't going to be walking momentarily. You just got to hope that nobody comes out of this thing with a serious injury. Especially if you're the winner of this thing. God forbid. You get injured during this matchup, but you're still able to win this thing. And then you're not able to cash in the contract because you walked out of this match so brutally damaged. That is the danger of the women's, or I should say, of the Money in the Bank ladder match. What a night is going to be here in Philadelphia. These six women already tearing down the house. Absolute brutal. Absolute carnage. That we are seeing in our opening contest here this evening. As Ember Moon's the only one in the ring, and she's got the right idea. Ember Moon looking to take advantage of an empty squared circle. She's climbing. She's trying to pull down the money in the bank. There's Shayna Baszler up at the top of our screen trying to get Ember Moon down as we're focusing all, all the women. Candice LeRae in there. Shayna trying to pull down Ember Moon. Look at this. From the rugs of the ladder, powerbombing Ember Moon. And there's Candice LeRae trying to scale the rugs. She's climbing up, but Shayna Baszler's there. And here comes Asuka up the other side. Every woman, nobody wants to give an inch. Meanwhile, Ember Moon, she's trying to push over the ladder. Asuka's smart to scale down that time. Learning from her mistakes a few minutes ago. And that ladder got tipped over and Asuka took a fall. Asuka now using the ladder as a weapon. One of the most dangerous parts of this thing, not just climbing the ladder, but getting hit with it. Asuka picking up the ladder back up. She could be looking to set that thing up. Squared circle. Well, Shannon Baszler taking a hard fall to the outside. Meanwhile, Ember Moon. Here comes Ember, but Shotzi springboards and drop kicks the ladder over. Asuka and Ember Moon taking a fall there. Meanwhile, Shotzi swinging. Neckbreaker right on the steel of the ladder. Brutal maneuver by Shotzi in this contest. But what a victory it would be for that young woman if she ever put on the contract here this evening. We talked about how impressive she has been in recent memory against Bianca Belair on Monday Night Raw. Shotzi very young in her career. What a win it would be if she's able to pull down the contract and earn herself another opportunity at whether it be Bianca Belair or Rhea Ripley for the Women's Championship. But Shotzi eats the ropes. Ember Moon's climbing the ladder. Io Shirai right there. Ember's got to watch her back. We're starting to get a ring full of women once again as Ember Moon has got Io on her back. Shotzi's in the ring. Here comes Candice. We'll keep it up with the action the best we can. And there goes the ladder. By hook or by crook, the ladder getting pulled out from underneath of them. And both Ember and Candice eating canvas. The brutality of this matchup as Shotzi dives to the outside. I believe she went on Io Shirai there with that elbow drop. Who is going to walk out of this? A future contender for the WWE Women's Champion Championship. Or who, I should say, who's going to walk out of this? Possibly just a future Women's Champion. We know the history of the Money in the Bank contract and how successful it has been over the years for many women and many men. Oh, and Asuka just using the ladder. Just actually smacking Ember Moon with it. I feel like Ember Moon is probably taking the most hard-hitting falls and damage in this contest if I had to speculate so far. A nice counter. Big time super kick from Ember Moon there. Shayna Baszler eating the soul of Moon. Oh, Shotzi unintentionally moving the ladder out of the way or else Shayna will went spine first on steel. Shotzi setting up the ladder inside of the ring. Asuka's going to be the one to climb it though. We're starting to once again Get a ring full of women, and Asuka, oh, she got hung up in the ropes there. An absolutely brutal fall for the Empress of Tomorrow. Just off the ladder, eating the ropes of the ring. You got Io and Shayna Baszler going at it there, former rivals in NXT. A lot of rivals in this matchup, Asuka and Ember Moon. They had their problems down in NXT. 
two classic bouts over the NXT Women's Championship. Io Shirai and Candice LeRae have squared up in the past. A lot of history between these six women here tonight. As Asuka once again going to try to be the one to climb the ladder and retrieve the contract. But meanwhile, she's on the tippy top here. Io Shirai is right there. Asuka, oh, she miscalculated whatever she was going for there. Honestly, I think that was honestly a good way to get out of not taking another spill. It's, oh, I believe Io Shirai and Shayna Baszler teaming up there. Double neck breaker. Asuka went spine and neck first on the steel of the ladder. Insane damage being done to the Empress of Tomorrow. We got two ladders in here with Shotzi and Io Shirai. And ladders collide and Shotzi staying in tall. What kind of carnage? I should say, what other carnage are we going to see in this thing? This match has been brutal since the get-go, and it's only getting worse. Shotzi with Io Shirai up and hangs her up at the top rope. Meanwhile, Asuka's in the ring, and she's got a damn kendo stick. Forget the ladders, Asuka says. She's going to bring even more brutality and more danger to this matchup. Oh, with the kendo stick to the head of the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. But Baszler, look how tough with the German suplex, and Asuka's still in here. And now the ring filling up yet again. The dangers of the Money in the Bank ladder match. It's not just ladders that are legal. Absolutely anything goes. It's all about climbing the ladder and retrieving the briefcase. That's the only way we're hearing a bell in this contest. And at this point, as we get into the later rounds in this matchup, these women have been going at it for solid almost 10 minutes so far, I'd say. It's all just a matter of who's going to be the last woman standing here who can withstand the damage. Is Asuka, meanwhile, trying to go for a submission on Io Shirai. Let's do some damage on her. But again, as I was mentioning, we're getting into the later rounds, championship rounds, if you will, in this ladder matchup. Obviously, no pinfalls or submissions or even knockouts or countouts here. But you got to incapacitate the other women of the contest or at least just be fast enough to climb the ladder behind their backs to have enough time to pull down that briefcase. So who is going to be the woman who's able to withstand all that damage and to withstand the punishment of the Money in the Bank ladder match long enough to climb the ladder and retrieve the briefcase? It just makes me wonder who's going to walk out of that men's match as well with the, or excuse me, with the men's Money in the Bank ladder match later tonight. We've got a couple of ladders just hanging around the ringside here. That's very dangerous for all six of these women. You got Candice and Asuka inside of the ring. Ember getting in there as well. Shotzi getting in there. It's all about climbing the ladder. Meanwhile, Ember Moon tried going for a crossbody. I don't think she got all of it on Candice and Asuka. Meanwhile, Candice with a tornado DDT. Asuka may have landed on that kendo stick, or at least right near it. The kendo stick that she brought into this contest. Now paying dividends for other women. Shotzi and Ember Moon, we discussed their tag team lineage in this contest, but... Definitely not letting them hold that back in this contest. It's all about the singles opportunity at hand. You know how tough Shotzi and Ember can be. They got all the respect for each other as tag team partners, but tonight it's about getting it done for yourself and getting yourself a shot at the WWE Women's Championship as Candice LeRae looks like she's going to be the one. Or possibly, I thought she was going to climb the ladder there, but she saw Shotzi awaken from the... Oh, and here's Asuka. I cut myself off here. Asuka sneaking up. She could be the one to pull down the ladder, or pull down the briefcase here. Excuse me. The Empress of Tomorrow. Meanwhile, Candice LeRae's right there, though. Asuka's hanging from the briefcase. Candice LeRae, electric chair, pulls her down. Asuka taking yet another big fall in this match, but she's still got life in her. The carnage definitely on, on display here. Shotzi is now climbing the climb the ladder. Oh, she's got the briefcase here. Shotzi could be the one to put on the contract. Now she's hanging from the tree of low. And Shayna Baszler pulls her down. And there goes another fall in this contest. These women are eating the canvas left and right. And Shayna Baszler with Ember Moon up in the sky. Drops her. Look at her choke her out once again in this contest. Shotzi saving her partner there from further damage from the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. As we mentioned earlier, this past week on main event, Ember Moon, Shotzi, and Shayna Baszler being forced to team up in a six-woman tag team matchup against Asuka, Io Shirai, and Candice LeRae. A lot of combustible elements 
Weren't sure how the women were going to be able to get involved in that matchup. Meanwhile, Io Shirai with a beautiful moonsault from the ladder to Ember Moon. And now she's back up on the top rope. But as we were mentioning, Shotzi, Ember Moon, and Shayna Baszler picking up a win over Io. Asuka and Candice on main event building some momentum here tonight. Meanwhile, Candice LeRae is in the center of the ring. She could be the one to pull down the briefcase here. Ember Moon looking to get around. Or excuse me, Io Shirai looking to get around Ember Moon here. Candice may, may be getting close. She's definitely getting close to unhooking it. And now she's hanging as Shotzi shoves over the ladder. Shotzi pulling her down in a powerbomb on the ladder. And Ember Moon takes down Io Shirai as well. And she hits the ladder. Back-to-back -back falls onto the steel in this contest. Asuka setting up the ladder. Now sends Ember Moon for a ride over the top rope. Nice spear down to Shotzi. Asuka looking to rule the ring momentarily. And Shayna Baszler just takes her out with the ladder. And what carnage we are witnessing in this contest as these women are giving it their all and absolutely throwing everything they have and the kitchen sink at each other in this contest. And 26 minutes into this show, and these women have been taking it all up so far. Nobody wants to give an inch. And nobody wants to be left lying on the mat, watching somebody else pull down the briefcase here this evening. Io taking down the Ember Moon in this contest. Ember Moon, I gotta say, is probably taking the most damage in this matchup so far. But, I mean, at this point, all six of these women have gotta be hurt. They've gotta be struggling to continue and compete in this match. Shotzi, look at this, sending her, oh, I was about to say, send her over the top rope, but Io Shirai eats the canvas, or excuse me, eats the turnbuckle in the corner. Shotzi looking good, very impressive in this contest. And while Asuka's going to set up the ladder inside of the middle of the ring, the Empress of Tomorrow is climbing, Asuka could be looking to take down Money in the Bank here. And meanwhile, Shotzi's right there to shove her off, and the ladder, ooh, the ladder hitting Asuka after Asuka takes a fall. Meanwhile, Io Shirai's up. Ember Moon eats a German suplex. Io Shirai on the top rope. Beautiful picture. Perfect mood salt to Oscar. All six of these women back in. I was going to say back in the ring, but Shotzi just gets sent to the outside. So does Oscar. Ooh, and she eats the ladder a little bit on that landing. Ember Moon on the top. Candice LeRae going after. Io Shirai going to set the ladder back up inside the squared circle here. Who's going to be the one, the last woman standing, to climb all the rugs one by one and unhook and retrieve that beautiful white and gold hanging above the ring. Shotzi the only one in there right now. She could be looking to climb the ladder. She could be the one to pull down the women's money in the bank briefcase. Asuka getting in the ring there. Shotzi's on the very tippy top. I think she's in a precarious predicament though as Shayna Baszler shove it over the ladder. And Shotzi not able to pull down the briefcase there. Great performance. No matter who walks out with the women's contract in hand in this one, you gotta give it up to all these women. For absolutely giving it their all in this contest. Nearing 20 minutes in this fight so far. As Candace just beating down Asuka inside of the ring. Meanwhile, Candice the right. Nice, some prettier to you, Sharon. Crowd here in Philadelphia, absolutely loving it. Coming unglued here in the land of extreme for a little bit of extreme action. As the tag team partners, Ember Moon and Shotzi, the last ones left in the ring. Ember taking down her tag team partner there. And Candice back in. Meanwhile, Ember Moon's got her and he takes down her as well. Ember looking good in this contest right now. We've talked about how much damage she's taken, but she's still hanging in there. Nobody wants to wants to walk away empty-handed here tonight. Meanwhile, Shotzi's climbing the ladder. Besides, against as she saw the posers coming. Meanwhile, Ember Moon. Shotzi's got her hands on the briefcase here. Shotzi could be about to be pulling down the contract. And meanwhile, Shayna Baszler climbing the other side. Shaking the ladder a little bit. Shotzi's getting ready for Shayna to get up there. Meanwhile, Ember Moon trying to shove the ladder over. No, no, no. Asuka's in there beating up Ember Moon. Meanwhile, Shayna Baszler 
Superplex from the top of the ladder on Shotzi. My God, what a fall for Shotzi in this contest. Shotzi taken. That for, oh, meanwhile, Asuka's now up there. And Candice LeRae grabbing a hold. And Asuka eats the canvas again. You almost don't even have time to digest the action here. So much action's going on. So much chaos in this six-woman fair. Asuka on the outside. Io on the outside. Got Shayna beating up Shotzi inside of the ring right now. Meanwhile, Candice LeRae with a nice missile drop kick to the outside. That's got to that's gotta take out Asuka for good, man. I don't know how she's going to get up from eating two boots to the face. Especially from that height and that angle from Candice LeRae. Io sends out the moon falling to the outside. Empress of Tomorrow is back in somehow, some way. Nice beat up slot to Shayna Baszler. And Asuka wants the goal. She wants to complete the objective here. She's got the ladder. In hand, take it out, Shotzi. It takes out Candice as well. And Asuka standing tall in the ring. The Empress of Tomorrow here could be about to pull down the Money in the Bank briefcase. And Candice going to try to get up there. Asuka wants this contract. And Asuka, Asuka retrieves the briefcase. My God, what an opening contest here tonight. All six of these women absolutely give it their all. The brutality, the chaos, the falls from the top, just like how you saw there. But in the end, the Empress of Tomorrow pulls down the white and gold contract. Here is your winner, Asuka! And her second, or excuse me, her third match upon her return. The Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, pulls down the Women's Money in the Bank briefcase and earns herself a future opportunity at the WWE Women's Championship. What a way to kick off Money in the Bank here this evening. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship! Well, the only way to try to follow an opening contest like that is with some of the most exciting Cruiserweight action you will find. The WWE Cruiserweight Championship on the line right here, right now, on the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Here is your number one contender, Isaiah Swerve Scott, who earned this opportunity a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw by defeating the one and only Ricochet in a first time ever in WWE contest. And it's very interesting how Isaiah Swerve Scott is the one to challenge Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship here this evening. As if you remember back when Santos won the Cruiserweight Championship back at the Backlash pay-per-view and that six man elimination pack challenge, excuse me, it was Isaiah Swerve Scott, the final man to fight Santos Escobar. And unfortunately coming up short, the leader of Legado del Fantasma with the Cruiserweight title on the line. So Isaiah Swerve Scott getting another crack. And again, the leader of Legado del Fantasma and your current Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Santos Escobar, right here tonight on pay-per-view. As we enter, Legado del Fantasma as one and your current reigning and defending Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Santos Escobar. As we mentioned, Santos Escobar was the last man standing in that six-pack elimination challenge at Backlash. It was a very exciting contest, but in the end, Santos Escobar walked away the brand new Cruiserweight Champion of the World. In recent matches, or I should say in recent weeks, he retained the Cruiserweight Championship over Grand Metalik in a very exciting contest on Monday Night Raw. Now his second defense under this Cruiserweight Championship reign against Isaiah Swerve Scott here at Money in the Bank. And man, what a matchup that we just had kicking us off moments ago. That women's Money in the Bank ladder match. In the end, Asuka walking out with the women's Money in the Bank briefcase. And I don't know how you can follow such a contest like that, but I'm sure these two exciting cruiserweights and Santos Escobar and Isaiah Swerve Scott are gonna give everybody a run for their money inside the squared circle this evening. 
And that is what it's all about. The Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Right here tonight in Philadelphia at Money in the Bank. I'm pumped up for this one. Isaiah Swerve Scott earning this opportunity. Even picking up a win over Raul Mendoza this past week on main event. So he's riding momentum high coming into this Cruiserweight Championship matchup. Both these men are. But who is going to be the one to knock the other of down a few pegs here this evening and walk out with the gold? Let's send things down to the ring. Introducing the challenger from Tacoma, Washington. Weighing in at 201 pounds, Isaiah Swerve Scott. And introducing the champion from Mexico City, Mexico. Weighing in at 200 pounds. He is the WWE Cruiserweight Santos Escobar. There you have it for your in-ring introductions. The stage is set. The match is now. Money in the Bank. Cruiserweight Championship of the World is on the line. The prestigious gold is up for grabs right here in this contest. Number one contender, Isaiah Swerve Scott, and the Cruiserweight Champion, Santos Escobar. Who is going to pick up the victory and walk out of Money in the Bank with that gold here this evening as the match is underway. As we mentioned, both of these men riding high on momentum as of late. Santos Escobar in his last two matches, Backlash, and the retaining championship over Grand Metalik on Raw. And then Isaiah Swerve Scott, his last two matches, earning, the ma earning this championship matchup over Ricochet, and then as well as that win over Raul Mendoza this past week all main event. Santos Escobar taking Isaiah Swerve Scott down here in the early going. Nice slam down on the mat. One thing about Santos Escobar's style inside the ring is he's so diverse. He can wrestle the high-flying cruiserweight, or I should say typical cruiserweight style that you'd expect inside of the ring. But Santos Escobar knows how to get you down on the mat. He knows how to beat you down. He can grapple. He can brawl. Santos, one of the best overall athletes in the square circle today. As you got to watch Legado Del Fantasma at ringside. Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild right there. Meanwhile, Santos Escobar drop kick to the back. To Isaiah Swerve Scott. That is going to do some damage on the number one contender. Two, Isaiah already taken that press slam moments ago. Now followed up with that drop kick to the back. Santos. Three, I think he knows he's not going to win this match on count out so early. But definitely sending a message of getting into the head of the number one contender. Oh, and he went for the double knees in the corner. But there's the number one contender getting out of the way. And Swerve with that tornado DDT. And that's going to be the offense that Isaiah needs to continue using to try to defeat Santos Escobar here this evening for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. And Isaiah going for the suplex here and he nails it. Nice maneuver there by our number one contender. As Isaiah Springboard, a nice bulldog by Isaiah Swerve Scott. Rolling here and able to put some offense together. But there's Santos Escobar. You can't turn your back on the champion. Two extremely talented competitors inside the ring going at it here to... Keep us rolling here on Money in the Bank. Santos going for that leg drop. He hit it earlier. This time he fails to. And there's Isaiah with that DDT. Elevated DDT, I should say. Nice move by the swerve. Back and forth we go here the last minute or so. Neither one of these men looking to give an inch. With such opportunity on the line as Isaiah goes to the top rope. But Santos right there. Isaiah, nice cross body. Taking down swerve. Or taking down Santos Escobar, excuse me. And nice, oh, he goes for the shooting star press. But Santos Escobar getting the knees up. Exciting action from these two cruiserweights here. As Santos Escobar with Isaiah Swerve Scott in a predicament. And Isaiah eats the canvas from the cruiserweight champion. Now he may be going towards a successful championship matchup for Santos Escobar. But Isaiah getting the shoulder up. Swerve staying in there. Staying resilient. Keeping the heart in this contest. Does not want to lose an opportunity of becoming the cruiserweight champion here tonight. Tonight is all about opportunity. As we mentioned, five championships, two briefcases decided here this evening as Santos Huracanarana Frankensteiner from the top rope. Send an Isaiah Swerve Scott for a ride. And meanwhile, Santos Escobar going for a splash and he nails it. Beautiful sequence of maneuvers from the leader of the Gato del Fantasma, but it's still not enough. Isaiah showing heart, showing soul, showing resilience in this matchup. 
able to survive the Frank Star Thunder, followed by, excuse me, that splash from the top. And Isaiah looking to put some offense together here over the Cruiserweight Champion. He's got him in her predicament. Oh, and Santos eats the knees to the chest. Isaiah Swerve Scott looking to make the Cruiserweight division. Looking to make money in the bank. Looking to make Philadelphia. Swerve's house here tonight. Santos went for that spear, but Isaiah sidestepped him. Now the number one contender is in control. Nice Falcon Arrow to the Cruiserweight Champion. Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza definitely not going to be happy seeing their leader fall in this contest. Isaiah starting to mo pick up momentum here. Really trying to piece things together. You can feel the sense of urgency from the number one contender. Santos Escobar getting his shoulder up just in the nick of time. As Isaiah looks like he's got something in mind for the Cruiserweight Champion here. Look at this, maybe a slice bread maneuver. Santos counters, and Isaiah eats the canvas. Nice counter by the Cruiserweight Champion. There's a reason he's on top of the Cruiserweight division. It's because of moves like that. Moves like this, the Phantom Driver. The move that won Santos Escobar the championship, but Isaiah Swerve Scott's hanging in it. Isaiah getting the shoulder up from Santos' best offense as he now hits the ropes, goes for the leg drop, but again, Isaiah Swerve Scott had it scouted for the second time, gets it out of the way. Falcon Arrow, number two. What a great matchup here for the Cruiserweight Championship. Nice shooting star press. He looked for it earlier. This time, he hit it. Santos may be in trouble. I think I can smell a new Cruiserweight Champion here tonight at Money in the Bank. No, Santos Escobar gets the shoulder up at two. What a contest here this evening between these two men with the title on the line. Nice and Sigori from the champion. Two amazing athletes, two amazing Cruiserweights battling out for the most prestigious prize in their division. Santos hits that double knees that he failed to hit earlier. Isaiah's down and out. Meanwhile, Santos Escobar is heading to the top rope. He could be looking for maybe splash number two. Oh no, he's got something else in mind. He's awaiting Isaiah Swerve Scott to get his souls on the canvas. And a nice cross body there. And Isaiah could be seeing his opportunity go up in smoke as Santos Escobar once again here has got... Oh no! Isaiah counters. Nice deck breaker. He had him in a predicament, but the Swerve able to battle out of it. And he's going for the championship here, but Santos once again getting the shoulder up. Got to say, great offense from both sides in this matchup. Isaiah Swerve Scott really battling out with some of Santos Escobar's best offense here, and he's bringing the fight of his own. And Santos finally hitting that leg drop that he's been searching for throughout this contest, and now grounded and pounded on the number one contender. This is some of that offense that we were talking about out of Isaiah Swerve Scott. He's so resilient inside of the squared circle here. Now Santos, nice move to take the swerve off of his feet. Swerve Scott, I didn't even, we failed to mention it. I'm just seeing it here. Looks like he's got a little color coming out of the forehead. That is definitely not going to pay dividends for him in this contest the later we get into this matchup. Now Isaiah, he's on spaghetti legs. He's dazed and confused. Meanwhile, the leader of Legado del Fantasma has got him up, taking him for a ride. And Isaiah eats the canvas once again. And Santos Escobar going into the cover. And he retains the Cruiserweight Championship here tonight at Money in the Bank. A great contest between these two amazing talents. Isaiah Swerve Scott putting up of the fight. Very resilient in this contest. Staying in there with Santos Escobar. But in the end, the leader of Legado del Fantasma just had the right recipe for success here tonight at Money in the Bank. Isaiah put up a great offense. Here is your there is your winner. And still the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar has been exactly perfect on Universe Mode. He is the Cruiserweight Champion of the world. Who is going to be the man to step up and dethrone the leader of Legado del Fantasma?
the championship matches keep on rolling on here tonight at Money in the Bank. This is for the inner Continental Championship of the World. The Celtic Warrior Sheamus defends against this man, the number one contender, the king of the Claymore, Drew McIntyre. These two men, former friends, now foes. A lot of history between these two combatants here tonight. An old rival, an old friendship. Now with a championship coming between them, here tonight at Money in the Bank. Drew McIntyre earned this spot to, to face Sheamus for the Intercontinental Championship. A couple of weeks ago on WWE Main Event, the last man standing in an eight man over the top rope battle royal. McIntyre with five of the seven eliminations in that contest, ultimately coming down to himself as well as Dominic Dijakovic and McIntyre. Claymore and kicking Dijakovic right out of the ring, right to the locker room, and McIntyre getting his hand raised on that night. We've discussed a lot how McIntyre is coming up short in big opportunities, but as of late, he's starting to get his mojo back, earning this match with Sheamus. A win over Jinder Mahal on main event. McIntyre is feeling like his old self again. And now he's looking to get a championship wrapped around his waist here tonight. But here comes the opposer. It's challenger versus the man. The champion. The Celtic warrior. Sheamus. Right here, right now. Sheamus became the Intercontinental Champion a few weeks back at the WWE Backlash pay-per-view when he went one-on-one -on -one with the King Shinsuke Nakamura. Sheamus on that night, a couple of bro kicks later, walked away with that beautiful championship around his waist. And now Sheamus looking to defend the title for the very first time here this evening. And man, what a challenger he has awaiting him. It could have been any of those eight. In that battle royal a couple of weeks ago, and any man would have been a true test for Sheamus here tonight. But Sheamus may have drew the worst straw possible, especially with the history between these two men. You know they're going to hold nothing back inside of the squared circle here tonight. This is going to be a brawl. This is going to be a fight. And with that prestigious Intercontinental Championship on the line, these men are going to leave everything inside of that ring here in Philadelphia, the land of extreme just to walk away with that prize, the Inner Continental Championship. Let's set the stage, let's head down to the ring for your official ring introductions. Introducing the challenger from Air Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, Drew McIntyre. And introducing the champion from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds. He is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. And here we go with our second championship match of five here this evening. Sheamus handing over the Intercontinental Championship, Drew McIntyre possibly looking at his future prize. The number one contender, Drew McIntyre, the Intercontinental Champion and Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. One on one with the gold on the line. Let's keep things rolling on here at Money in the Bank as this match is underway. I'm excited for this one. Two old friends, now foes, two behemoths inside the squared circle gonna be fighting it out. Gonna be brawling it out, tooth and nail, like a bar fight, if you will, with the Intercontinental Championship on the line. These two have a lot of history with each other inside of that ring. And it all started with jealousy over championships and success inside the ring. Now these two find each other, meeting their ways back down the road, right here tonight, over yet another championship, this time the prestigious Intercontinental Gold. As Sheamus, nice axe hammer to Drew McIntyre, taking the big man off his feet. Sheamus gonna be looking to ground and pound and keep the big man from building momentum throughout this matchup. That's gonna be Sheamus' recipe for success here. On the other hand, McIntyre needs to do what brought him to the dance these last few weeks, and that's keep up the intensity. 
and keep up the focus. And McIntyre has been well documented, failing on a couple of big opportunities the last couple of months. He failed to earn himself a WWE Championship opportunity against AJ Styles. He failed to qualify for tonight's Money in the Bank by losing to Edge in the Money in the Bank qualifying matchup. But McIntyre bouncing back over the last number of weeks, winning that battle royal and an impressive victory over Jinder Mahal on main event. And now he's got to get it done where it counts to try to walk out with the Intercontinental Championship and get back close to the top of the mountain here in the WWE. Someone where Drew McIntyre once was in his career. McIntyre has been their continental champion before, early on in his days in the WWE. A completely different, completely different man now as McIntyre takes down Sheamus with the right hand, looking to become the new intercontinental champion, but Sheamus getting the shoulder up. As I mentioned, McIntyre, a former intercontinental champion, looking to get it done once more inside of the ring. Sheamus on his first ever run with the intercontinental championship as we speak. Nice sit out maneuver by McIntyre there. Sheamus eating the canvas. Spine first and a nice bicycle knee. Takes down McIntyre momentarily. But Sheamus we've talked about on his road leading up to backlash and that backlash in recent weeks. Now Sheamus has been one of the most decorated athletes in WWE history. A Grand Slam winner of championships. He held the Money in the Bank contract before. He won the Royal Rumble match before. Sheamus! Look at that. Off the apron taking down Drew McIntyre. Both these men with great accolades and great history in the WWE. Sheamus looking to keep his first ever reign with the Intercontinental Championship going here this evening. McIntyre to get another one under his books. He sends McIntyre to the barricade. This is what we were talking about earlier. The brawl and the fight that is going to go down between these two men. And Sheamus eating the, or excuse me, McIntyre eating the ring post there. And Sheamus getting back into the ring. I'm sure he would love to win this match via countout. As McIntyre's down and out, referee's at a count of six. Sheamus could walk out of here, retaining the Intercontinental Championship on a countout. And it's quite possible, but McIntyre getting back into the ring with plenty of time to spare. But Sheamus going to keep the fight to Drew McIntyre. Sheamus has got a cut over his eye. I'm not sure when that took place. But Sheamus is rocking the Crimson Mask in this contest. That is not going to go well for him as we get later into this contest. Definitely an advantage for Drew McIntyre here. Sheamus is bleeding from the forehead. McIntyre coming from the top, dropping the elbow. What a fight, tooth and nail these last few minutes between these two men. McIntyre sending Sheamus for a ride there. Nice kick, he could be looking for the future shock DDT. McIntyre hits it right to the bloody chrome dome of the Intercontinental Champion. McIntyre hit one of his signature maneuvers. He's won the Intercontinental Championship in his young days with that maneuver. Sheamus could be close to lose the title here, but he gets the shoulder up at 2.9, and McIntyre not yet winning this contest. They look to keep the offense going, goes for the neck breaker. Sheamus pushes him off in a nice clothesline by the Intercontinental Champion. Nice counter there, and there's a McIntyre counter. There's a kick. Sheamus rolling out of it here. Nice chop from Sheamus. Back and forth we're going here. And now Sheamus has got McIntyre up. Going to look to hit one of his signature maneuvers. McIntyre, spine first on the canvas. Sheamus into the cover. Looking to retain the Intercontinental Championship here at Money in the Bank. McIntyre gets his shoulder up. Man, what a contest. What a fight for the Intercontinental Championship here. Just the last few minutes. I'm sure Sheamus feels a sense of urgency with the blood tricking down his head. He does not want to get in the late rounds in this matchup with Drew McIntyre. There's something McIntyre, I'm sure, would love to prey on if he can. And Sheamus going a little uncharacteristic here. Heading to the top rope, but you got to do what you got to do when you're in there with the caliber of Drew McIntyre. A nice shoulder block from the Celtic Warrior. McIntyre down. Sheamus keeping the fight going. He's going into the cover. Sheamus going to retain the championship here, but McIntyre able to power out and get the shoulder up. Sending the number one contender into the corner. Sheamus going for the something here. He's sending McIntyre up top. Sheamus. Oh, look at this. He's got McIntyre. Fireman's carry position here. Could be looking for a senton, but oh, McIntyre countering out. Nice elbows. 
Oh, Drew McIntyre for the top here. Bulldog by Drew McIntyre. I did not expect to see these two bulls going at it. And McIntyre with the Claymore. To the bloody forehead of Sheamus. Wood Avenue, Intercontinental Champion, but Sheamus gets his shoulder up just in time. What a sequence of maneuvers from Drew McIntyre. I was about to say, I did not expect to see these two bulls going flying from the top rope in this match. But McIntyre goes for the leg drop. Sheamus gets out of the way. The fight rolls on. McIntyre almost having Sheamus there. Meanwhile, Sheamus, nice backbreaker. Bro kick to Drew McIntyre. And will Sheamus put Drew McIntyre away with his kick here? But McIntyre getting the shoulder up. What a matchup we got for the Intercontinental Championship. McIntyre, the Claymore doesn't do it. Sheamus, the bro kick doesn't do it. These two men still fighting tooth and nail over the gold. McIntyre sends the champion into the corner. Sheamus, nice counter. And we got ourselves a fight with the Intercontinental Championship on the line. Looks like Sheamus is sending Drew McIntyre back to the top rope. Could be looking for the maneuver that he was looking for a few moments ago. Back in that fireman's carry position, McIntyre not going anywhere. Senton from Sheamus, McIntyre. Goes splat on the canvas. Into the cover and Sheamus picks up the victory. What a fight, a bar fight between these two men. McIntyre throwing his best shots, Sheamus throwing his best shots. These guys going uncharacteristic with the maneuvers from the top rope. Kicking out of each other's best maneuvers. But in the end, Sheamus able to keep down Drew McIntyre here at Money in the Bank tonight. Look at this, the bro kick from Sheamus. Can't believe that didn't do the job, but Drew McIntyre putting up a hell of a fight. But in the end, we still have the Celtic Here's Warrior on top. And still, the WWE Intercontinental Champion, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! Bloody forehead and all, and tough as nails, Sheamus retains the Intercontinental Championship in an incredible fight versus Drew McIntyre here tonight at Money in the Bank. What a matchup between those two. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Raw Women's Championship. Well, the championship may be on the line in this matchup, but there's just a little bit more writing on it as well. A couple of attacks from Rhea Ripley to Bianca Belair. Has Belair searching for retribution here tonight? But with the Women's Championship on the line, who is going to walk out? with the gold around their waist. Rhea Ripley, the number one contender. She has dominated over the last couple of weeks. A victory over Liv Morgan this past week on Raw, where Bianca Blair tried to get retribution after the post-match attack by Ripley a few weeks ago. But even after Bianca tried using Ripley's own tactics against her, coming from behind, Rhea is still fighting back and laying out Bianca Belair for the second time inside the squared circle. A new change in attitude for Rhea Ripley. She cut to the front of the line of the women's division. She said she wanted a women's championship opportunity. She got the attention of the champion and now she's getting what she wanted here this evening at Money in the Bank. But will getting into the head of the women's champion throw Belair off her game and be enough to crown Rhea Ripley the new women's champion here tonight? Or will it do the opposite and fire up the women's champion? And will Bianca Blair, who has been on a roll as of late, keep things going and keep momentum on her side and be able to fight back against the brutality of Rhea Ripley? And here comes your WWE Women's Champion, Bianca Blair. She's been on a roll as of late. Victories over Shotzi, retaining the title over Sasha Banks at Backlash. A victory over Bailey on Monday Night Raw, the night Rhea Ripley attacked. Blair has been at the top of her game and truly deserves to be at the top of the WWE Women's Division. But will it be enough to take Rhea Ripley off her game? Wait, wait, Rhea Ripley getting in the ring. We don't even got the ring introductions, but Rhea Ripley's not waiting. 
And the referee is called for the bell. This match has started. Rhea Ripley, your number one contender, Bianca Blair, your champion. The WWE Women's title is on the line right here, right now, at Money in the Bank. And Bianca keeping the fight on Rhea Ripley. Ripley's tried to attack Bianca Belair, and she did so successfully to kick this match off, sticking to what has brought her to this match up here tonight. But Belair's got a fire under her ass. She wants to get retribution over the number one contender for the post-match assaults, for the beatdowns over the last couple of weeks. Who will be the last woman standing and who is going to walk out of Philadelphia with the white and red around their waist here this evening as Rhea Ripley hits the big boot on Bianca Belair. Now stomping away on the champion, Rhea Ripley, so brutal, so dominant, inside the squared circle. Well, everything that Rhea Ripley brings to the table, size, strength, stature, and pure brutality, be enough to dethrone the WWE Women's Champion, and as of late, the true queen of WWE, Bianca Belair. Nice drop toe hold by Rhea Ripley, like her tactics or not, she is dangerous inside the ring. And she has had Bianca Belair's number the last couple of weeks. And Rhea Ripley, Bianca's tried to fight back, but ever since she clotheslined her to kick off this contest, she's pretty much been in control since the opening bell. We didn't even get the ring introductions here. But nonetheless, we got these two women going at it with the championship on the line. Is Rhea Ripley going to go for the suplex on Bianca Belair? We know how strong Belair is, but Rhea Ripley just might be a little stronger. We talked about how dominant and impressive Bianca has been over the last couple of weeks. A couple of victories over Shotzi as we talked about earlier tonight. And then the last time she defended the championship at Backlash against the boss Sasha Banks. Unintentionally breaking a few of the ribs of Sasha Banks on that night. And in the end was able to walk out of that matchup. The WWE Women's Champion still. Also a victory over Bayley on Monday Night Raw a few weeks back. Bianca has been super impressive inside the ring. Can she keep her momentum going and keep the championship over her shoulder here this evening? You see Blair just going a little uncharacteristic of herself. Just beating down Rhea Ripley here. And now using her strength. Look at this. Press slam and Rhea Ripley above her head. And down below goes Ripley on the canvas. Both these women... Got the strength going for him. Two of the strongest women, if not the strongest women, in the women's division today. Bianca's probably has the speed over Rhea Ripley, I gotta say, but Rhea Ripley may just have the killer instinct over Bianca Belair. It's gonna be very interesting to see as we get into the later rounds of this matchup. Who's got it in them to keep fighting? Is Bianca gonna keep using her strength? As an advantage here, picking up Rhea Ripley, deadlifted her off the mat, and a nice press slam. Rhea Ripley once again goes crashing down. A nice shooting star press by Bianca Blair. One thing she's got over Ripley is a little bit of that high-flying style. Rhea down, able to get the shoulder up, though. Beautiful maneuver by the women's champion, Bianca Blair. She hits the ropes. Look at this. Another splash there by the women's champion. Rhea Ripley bouncing up though, she's looking to stay in the fight here, she does not want to fall behind and let the champion take control and as she just takes out the knee, nice chop block by the number one contender, like her tactics or not, they are effective. And Bianca with a spear, just tackling down the number one contender. So there's been a fight between these two women since the opening bell, when Rhea Ripley attacked Bianca Blair during her opening entrance. Nice shot from Rhea Ripley and a nice super kick by the number one contender. Absolutely landing it flush and she follows it up with a like drop. Brutal and dominating kicks by Rhea Ripley and now she's got Bianca Belair right where she wants her, sending her into the corner. And Belair just eats the turnbuckles. Nice kick there, looks like Rhea might be going for that pump handle slam, slams her down. Sits out with it into the cover. Rhea Ripley about to become the new women's champion early on here. But Bianca Belair getting the shoulder up. That was a big time maneuver from Rhea Ripley there. One of her signatures. Belair able to withstand it. But Rhea Ripley going to try to stay in control here. Now the grounded and pounding from the number one contender. Bianca take a lot of offense. A lot of pain and suffering on her lower back in this contest. It's one thing you got. 
Oh, and you're facing somebody with the strength of Rhea Ripley. One thing you gotta handle, I should say. Rhea in firm control here, but it's all about getting the one, two, three and becoming the women's champion. Bianca Belair getting sent right over the top rope. Big time maneuver as Rhea Ripley keeping the offense on Bianca Belair, diving from the apron with that senton. And Bianca just getting crushed between Rhea and the mat below. Women's champion is in dangerous territory right now as she eats another super kick after crashing into our announce tables. Rhea's got Belair exactly where she wants her in this contest. And we could just very well be looking at the next WWE Women's Champion. And meanwhile, whoa, 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 Bianca Belair, look at this, out of nowhere, it's got Rhea on her shoulders, KOD! Out of nowhere, Bianca Belair bouncing up, hitting the KOD! Rhea Ripley may be down and out, Bianca Belair looking to retain the Women's Championship, and Rhea getting the shoulder up. What a maneuver from the women's champion. Rhea's been in control the last number of minutes. But Belair right there, out of nowhere, hitting the KOD on the number one contender. And now she's got Rhea lifted above her head once again in this matchup. And Rhea takes the fall. Bianca Belair is feeling it here. Now she's heading to the top. Goes for the splash. We've seen Bianca pick up victories with some of those high-risk maneuvers in the past. And she follows it up with another one. Nice shooting star press from the women's champion. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. The women's money in the bag holder, Asuka, is here at ringside. Is she cashing in? Uh, no, she's not. Asuka's walking away. Rhea Ripley's here. The women's money in the bank. Winner from earlier tonight, Asuka coming to ringside. I thought she was about to cash in and make this thing a triple threat, but it looks like she was just sending a message to the women's champion. Interesting predicament, but nonetheless, Rhea Ripley's got Belair tied up. She's going to tap her out and become women's champion here. Rhea Ripley's got it locked in. Belair is struggling to hold on. She's in a predicament, but Belair able to get out of it. I'm losing my voice here from this contest. What a freaking matchup we got going on. Asuka throwing everybody off their game, coming down the ringside. I thought she was going to cash in, but she simply just came out seemingly to send the message. And Belair with Ripley. Ripley tried taking advantage of the distraction, but Bianca Belair is still in this fight. And a nice counter from Ripley here. These two women are really starting to go at it. Nice super, or super kick, excuse me. Blair's dazed and confused. Ripley sending her into the corner yet again. Now gonna go for that running big boot. She hit this flush earlier. She hits it for the second time in this contest. And the women's champion may be knocked out for good. You see Ripley's just throwing everything at Bianca Belair right now. Just trying to beat her down. Destroy her in this contest. Rhea wants nothing more than to walk out with the Women's Championship. Her assaults and her attacks on Bianca are what started this whole thing as Bianca sending Rhea for a ride. And another shooting star press. Beautiful maneuver by Bianca Belair. She goes into the cover. Rhea Ripley might be down and out for good. Bianca Belair steals the victory. It just doesn't get more impressive than Bianca Belair. What a freaking roll she has been on inside of the ring. And the momentum continues to be on her side here tonight. Through the distraction from Asuka. Through the attack from Rhea Ripley. In the end, the women's champion, she's still got heart. And she's still got fight. And she's still got the gold. Every champion, every challenger that has been thrown at the EST has fallen the same way. Bianca is on the roll of a lifetime here. And through everything she went through tonight, Rhea Ripley couldn't get the job done. And the gold stays with the EST of WWE. My question is, who the hell is going to be the one to step up to Bianca Blair and dethrone her inside of the ring? It doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. 
is because Bianca Belair is on the roll of a lifetime, and she is still Women's Champion of the World. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming soon, a hot prospect of the WWE Performance Center. They call him the Colossal. Omos is coming soon to Monday Night Raw. It is going to be very interesting to see Omos upon arrival here in the WWE. But the championship action continues here with the Tag Team Gold. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE World Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 380 pounds, Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch. You can call them the challengers, but they're also the team that owns a recent victory over the current World Tag Team Champions, Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders. Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch absolutely earning themselves this opportunity here tonight, like them or not. They're the number one contenders, but they gotta try to dethrone these two men for the second time. Eric and Ivar, the World Tag Team Champions of the World. This time is where it counts, when the gold is on the line. Who's gonna get it done here at Money in the Bank? And introducing the champions at a combined weight of 552 pounds. They are the World Tag Team Champions, Ivar! This is a team who has two recent victories over Randy Orton and Riddle, RK Bro, the team they defeated to win the World Tag Team Championships, and the team they defeated in the rematch at Backlash a couple of weeks back. Eric and Ivar, even though they've lost to Danny Burch and Ernie Lorcan, have been very impressive inside the squared circle since winning the World Tag Team Championships, and they're looking to keep that momentum on their side, and looking to keep those championships around their waist here tonight. They're bringing the fight. They're bringing the war to the land of extreme, but will it be enough to take down Danny Burch and Ernie Lorcan? Will Burch and Lorcan get victory number two over Eric and Ivar, this time where it matters when the gold's on the line? It's been an incredible night of action so far, and things are going to roll on right now with the WWE World Tag Team Championships on the line. Danny Burch, Oni Lorcan, former NXT Tag Team Champions, taking on Eric and Ivar, the WWE World Tag Team Champions. The stage is set, the match is now. The Tag Team Championships of the WWE up for grabs here tonight in Philadelphia. That is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to the action. The bell has sounded. We're underway. Oni Lorcan and Ivar, your legal men, to kick off this tag team matchup. And as we mentioned, it was right before Backlash when Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch picked up the victory over Eric and Ivar on Monday Night Raw. And since then, we've been discussing, they were at the front of the line and the number one contenders for whoever walked out of Backlash with the World Tag Team Championships. Eric and Ivar, of course, retained on that night. And now we get a rematch from Raw over a month ago. Eric and Ivar looking to right the wrong from that night. Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch hoping that lightning strikes twice, this time with the Tag Team Championships on the line. It's been an incredible night of action so far. Three championship matches and one ladder match down. Asuka walking out with the women's Money in the Bank contract in hand. Santos Escobar still your Cruiserweight Champion. Sheamus still your Intercontinental Champion. And Bianca Blair still your WWE Women's Champion. As Eric and Ivar, a little bit of double team from the World Tag Team Champions. Eric is in now. Oni Lorcan tagging in Danny Burch. As we mentioned, Birch and Lorcan, former NXT Tag Team Champions, Eric and Ivar, have held those same golds years ago. And now Eric going into the cover in the early going, looking to put Danny Birch away early. But Birch, a tough SOB inside of the ring. All four of these men are. That's something that Danny Birch and Rooney Lorcan pride themselves on, is how rough and tough they are inside the squared circle. They can fight you, they can brawl with you, they can also get technical and grapple and out-wrestle you inside of the ring. 
an underrated and impressive team in the professional wrestling squared circle. Eric coming off the second rope with the axe hammer. Of course, still to come tonight, the WWE Championship on the line in a triple threat contest. AJ Styles going to defend against two men who have been having major issues with each other as of late. Jeff Hardy and Finn Balor. And then after that, the men's Money in the Bank ladder match in your main event. Edge, Samoa Joe, Damian Priest, Mustafa Ali, Austin Theory, and Riddle all going to try to climb the ladder and retrieve the briefcase. That'll be your main event coming up shortly. For the World Tag Team Championships are what it's all about at this point in time. And we got two incredible teams going at it. It's Danny Burch, nice knife edge, chopped to the back, and he follows it up with a kick to Eric. Danny Burch in control for his team right now. It was Danny Burch who got the pinfall in that tag team matchup on Raw over a month ago. Again, it's all about seeing if Lightning can strike twice for Burch and Lorcan here this evening. And Odie Lorcan just hammering rights and lefts on Eric and now throwing some elbows and now a chop in there. Odie Lorcan absolutely unloading on Eric of the Viking Raiders. That was another one there. And takes him over. Odie Lorcan, he's, what, he, what we're seeing right now out of Odie Lorcan is exactly what we said moments ago. He came in just absolutely scrapping with Eric with the rights and lefts and then we saw him with that takeover there. Out wrestling Eric. Now from the top rope goes for the elbow drop, and Eric able to sidestep it. There's Oni Lorcan right there, staying on the offense, and once again takes Eric to the mat. Oni Lorcan, such a complete athlete inside of that ring, and now he tags in the man from overseas, Danny Burch, is back into this contest. They're really singling out Eric these last few minutes. He's definitely in need of a tag as of right now. Nice shot to the gut, Eric, one of your strongest competitors inside of the ring. He's got an MMA background, well documented. He knows how to throw the lefts and throw the rights and out Russell he as well. Danny Burch trying to get himself out of Viking Raiders corner. And now Eric, look at this, unloading on Danny Burch himself. Showing that he knows how to fight inside of the ring. But Danny Burch taking him, taking him over. Another nice match, chopped to the back and follows over the kick. Going to the well with what works. And Burch going for the cover on Eric here. Gonna have new World Tag Team Champions, not yet, says Eric. Really been getting beat up these last few minutes. Luckily for him, there's the tag to Ivar. Oni Lorcan also in now. Now we're back where we started with Oni Lorcan and Ivar inside of the ring. Ivar down and out. Oni Lorcan to keep the momentum going. Nice kick to the gut. Lorcan hits the ropes and a nice blockbuster there. Signature maneuver from Oni Lorcan. Lorcan's headed to the top rope off the blockbuster. Ivar is down and out. He could be looking to close things out here and win the World Tag Team Championship. Super blockbuster from the top rope. A float over from Oni Lorcan there. We're going to have new Tag Team Champions of the World, but Ivar getting his shoulder up. First a blockbuster in the ring, and then the floater from the top rope. Oni Lorcan piecing together his maneuvers there, but it wasn't enough in the moment to keep Ivar down. Ivar trying to keep the momentum going for himself as well as Eric. The Viking Raiders not looking to leave Philadelphia empty-handed here tonight. Big time splash from the big man of the matchup. That'll certainly knock the wind out of you. Only looking a little dazed, but he's countered back here. Gotta say, Danny Burch, Oni Lorcan, they've been looking, looking great in this contest. They've had the momentum for the majority. Right now, they're definitely looking like the favorites to win this matchup. That's not me doubting the Viking Raiders. I'm just calling it as I see it as Birch and Lorcan have been in control for the majority of this matchup since the opening bell. Nice overhand shot from Danny Birch and just beating the hell out of Ivar. Birch and Lorcan looking incredible here. Nice submission hold here by Ivar, a little close to the ropes. But the big man don't need the ropes. Look at this, able to outstrength Danny Birch there. Goes for the big boot, but Birch counters with the uppercut. Signature maneuver for both Burch and Lorcan, but Ivar's right there to take it down with the clothesline. Falls it up with a kick and a nice big boot for the big man. Viking Raiders trying to do anything they can to mount some offense here. But Burch and Lorcan, there you go, right back into control. But here's Ivar trying to fight back. Now Ivar 
Sends him off into the corner. Nice close line. We got a running bulldog from the big man. Signature maneuver out of Ivar. Trying to mount some momentum, and he drops the leg to the back. And now we're seeing the Viking Raiders getting into their flow here. The World Tag Team Champions are going to put things away. Danny Burch in a precarious situation on the shoulders of Ivar, and he eats the canvas. And the Viking Raiders looking to retain the World Tag Team Championships. A little closer to the ropes there. Ivar now into the cover. But Danny Burch gets the shoulder up. May have had him put away. Hanging up in close to the ropes originally. But nonetheless, it's about what we're here now. And Ivar coming from the top with a big time splash. That's the maneuver that won the Viking Raiders the World Tag Team Championships all that time ago. But it's not enough to retain the titles yet here tonight. What a tag team matchup we got on our hands. Birch and Lorca were controlling for a couple of minutes, but now Ivar is being the, being the winner for the Viking Raiders. And now Danny Birch with that cross face in on Ivar. A tap out here means we have new tag team champions of the world. Ivar using his strength. Rolls him out. Nice kick to the gut. Tries following up with the big boot. Danny Birch out of the way. Nice counter there. Beautiful. Birch may be down. Viking Raiders. Ivar goes for the kick with Danny Burks. And another reversal. Ivar unloaded with the kicks to Danny Burks. About three of them there, and he follows it up with yet another big boot. You see Burks is trying to crawl to the corner, get the fresher man, Oni Lorcan, in. Ivar's got other plans. He's just unloaded on Burks here. He's into the corner now. He's in Viking Raiders' corner, and he's absolutely trapped. We got a tag made to Eric. Eric's go to the top. They could be looking for the big time finisher maneuver. From the top comes the leg drop from Eric. Viking Raiders looking to retain the World Tag Team Championships but only Lorcan in to break up the count. Lorcan in to break up the count but there's Eric dropping him with the fall away neck breaker. And Eric trying to keep the fight on Danny Birch. The Birch with a counter. Nice kick. Eric may be in trouble here. Danny Burch trying to mount some momentum. But Eric into the counter. Reversals back and forth from these men. Nice German suplex from Danny Burch. Eric pops up. Shoulder block there. Another kick. Another right. Overhand chops. The rolling forearm. Danny Burch counters. Goes for the chop. Eric counters. And a headbutt takes him down. Reversal after reversal. I feel like we're watching NXT TakeOver right now between these two former NXT Tag Team Champions. And Burch takes over Eric. Danny Burch going it alone right now as Oni Lorcan is dazed and confused on the outside of the ring. Nice shot, Eric able to reverse. Now tag made to Ivar. This is not where Danny Burch wants to be right now. Danny Burch in a precarious situation. Ivar springboard clothesline. Danny Burks taking the fall there. Meanwhile, Ivar going after Oni Lorcan. It just sends him for a ride. But that unfortunately cost Ivar the momentum there as Danny Burks getting the time to rest. What a great tag team matchup we have coming to you right here tonight. May the 2nd, 2022, here at Money in the Bank. The World Tag Team Championships are what it's all about. These two teams are going at it. With the gold on the line. Tons of reversals in this one. Both these teams doing their homework, studying the last contest that they had between each other. Now one to give it in and let the other take control as Ivar comes to the top and he drops the elbow on Danny Birch. That is not an elbow you want to need coming from that kind of big man. But meanwhile, Birch taking over Ivar. Knife edge chop follows it up with a kick. And under the cover, Burks looking to retain, or excuse me, win the Tag Team Championship for Ivar still in the fight. Only Lorcan back up on the apron, Eric's on the apron. We're at a stalemate momentarily here. Nice form, one of the strongest hitters in that ring, Danny Burch. Taking him over, going to the well with what works. Another kick to the set, to the chest, excuse me. Ivar tried to go for the big boot. Burch is right there. Hanging him up on the ropes. Springboard. Forearm to the back, make it two. Ivar down below. Tag made to Oni Lorcan, finally getting a fresh man in this contest. 
Ivar's trying to climb to Eric here. We got the hot tag. Eric is in. Nice four on by Eric. The two fresh men battling out. Look at this. Eric with the kick. And that kick has put several men away in Viking Raiders tag team action. Sending Ernie Lorcan into the ropes. Look at this. Belly to belly suplex. Eric piecing together some offense here and he drops the elbow on Ernie Lorcan. Eric getting the momentum back on the side of your current world tag team champions, the Viking Raiders. Ernie Lorcan is down. Eric with a nice shot. We're going to put things away here momentarily for the Viking Raiders. Eric, or excuse me, Ivar down and out on the outside. And we got Oni Lorkin making the tag to Danny Burch. And now we got a one-on-one -on -one matchup as Ivar's down, Oni Lorkin's down. Eric sends Danny Burch into the ropes. Beautiful missile drop kick hitting Danny Burch like a bullet. Big time maneuver. Lorkin's down, Eric. Oh, there's that kick to the back. Right to the spine of the opponent. And that move has spelled the end for many. And it spells the end for Birch and Lorkin here tonight. Great matchup and a great effort by the challengers, Danny Birch and Oni Lorkin. They got the job done in the past. But here tonight, when the lights were on bright on pay-per-view and the gold was on the line, it's Eric and it's Ivar walking out. Still, the WWE World Tag Team Champions the Viking Raiders on top. What a ta what a great tag team matchup here this evening. Here are your winners and still World Tag Team Champions, Ivar and Eric, the Viking Raiders. Birch and Lorcan fall. Who is going to be next to step to the champion? The hits just keep on coming. Money in the Bank continues. The WWE Championship is on the line in a triple threat matchup. One fall to a finish. One man leaves Philadelphia with the richest prize in our sport, the WWE Championship of the world. Challenger number one, Jeff Hardy. The charismatic enigma is in the house. The following contest is a triple threat match and is for the WWE Championship. Introducing the challenger from Cameron, North Carolina, weighing in at 225 pounds, Jeff Hardy. It's a very interesting situation at hand. AJ Styles defending the WWE Championship against two men that have been at each other's throats for several weeks. Jeff Hardy and Finn Balor. Their issues stem farther from the WWE Championship. Brawls and attacks and retribution has been at the mind of Jeff Hardy. And moving past and putting down Jeff Hardy has been on the mind of Finn Balor. But now tonight, how will their issues play into the fact that they both want to leave Philadelphia with the WWE Championship? It's a very interesting situation, and only time will tell how things are going to play in with the gold on the line here tonight. Jeff Hardy is in the ring, but here comes challenger number two as the Prince arrives inside the Wells Fargo Center here at Money in the Bank. And introducing the challenger from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland. Weighing in at 190 pounds, Finn Balor! Finn Balor has been on a bit of a roll as of late. Last time we saw him on pay-per-view was him and Jeff Hardy one-on-one, -on -one, where Finn Balor picked up the win on that night. He recently owns a victory over John Morrison, with Jeff Hardy sticking his nose in that match on that night, and also for Finn Balor, he owns a victory over the WWE Champion, the phenomenal AJ Styles, something Jeff Hardy could not do when those two men met this past Monday on Raw. So Finn Balor has been on the winning side of things as of late. But as we've been mentioning a lot throughout tonight, it's not about how you get here, it's about what happens when you arrive at the dance. Can you get the done 
or can you get the job done when the lights are on bright, when we're on pay-per-view, and when the gold is on the line. This is a night all about opportunity. Opportunity is in the air. And we are about to enter our final championship match of the evening. And it's the most prestigious prize there is. The WWE Championship. The title currently held by AJ Styles. The title that Jeff Hardy has held in his career. But a championship that Finn Balor has never held in his career. He was the first ever Universal Champion relinquished it due to injury. He's a multiple time NXT Champion. A former Intercontinental Champion. Finn Balor has some accolades. But he's never been to the tippy top of the mountain in the WWE. Can he get it done here tonight at Money in the Bank? Challenger 1 has arrived. Challenger 2 has arrived. And now we approach the phenomenal WWE Champion of the World, AJ Styles. The man who dethroned the almighty Bobby Lashley back at Backlash to win the WWE Championship enters his first defense here tonight. And introducing the champion from Gainesville, Georgia. Weighing in at 218 pounds, he is the WWE Champion, the Phenomenal AJ Styles. AJ Styles, as we mentioned, losing to Finn Balor a couple of weeks ago. However, he does have recent victories since winning the WWE Championship at Backlash, as we mentioned over Bobby Lashley, recent win over Cedric Alexander on main event and then picking up the win over Jeff Hardy this past week on Raw. At the end of the day, all the momentum matters, but it ain't the final nail in the coffin. It's what happens when the gold is on the line. So here we are, Wells Fargo Center, Philadelphia, pay-per-view, May the 2nd, 2022. The charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy, the Prince, Finn Balor, and the phenomenal AJ Styles. And it's all about that prestigious prize on your television screens right now. The WWE Championship. I'm ready. Philadelphia is ready. These three men are ready. Let's decide the WWE Champion right here, right now, at Money in the Bank as this match is underway. Triple threat rules, one fall to a finish, no disqualifications, and no countouts in this contest. Finn Balor, Jeff Hardy going at it right here. I'm very interested to see how much they focus on each other throughout the matchup. But they got to keep in mind AJ Styles, the man himself, the man who's bringing the WWE Championship to their fight. It's a very interesting scenario with AJ Styles' first title defense being a triple threat against two men who absolutely hate each other and Jeff Hardy and Finn Balor. It all started when Finn Balor attacked Jeff Hardy seemingly out of frustration after picking up Weeks and weeks of losses. A loss to Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is seemingly sending Finn Balor over the edge. But Jeff Hardy won a retribution over Finn Balor for that attack. It led them to backlash where Finn Balor defeated Jeff Hardy. But Jeff Hardy not satisfied yet. He wanted more retribution over Finn Balor. We saw a post-match attack. Jeff Hardy getting a short answer. Laying out Finn Balor a couple weeks ago. But through this matchup the WWE Championship, it keeps their roads going down the same path. As Jeff Hardy sent to the outside momentarily, we have Finn Balor and AJ Styles, two former friends inside the squared circle with each other right now. And Jeff Hardy, meanwhile, comes into the ring. Nice springboard drop kick from the charismatic Enigma. Jeff Hardy, a man who has been WWE Champion before, winning the title for the first time in December of 2008. He's also a two-time world heavyweight champion, as well as a former United States champion, tag team champion, a decorated tag team champion, former intercontinental champion. Jeff Hardy has had a Hall of Fame career in the WWE, but that doesn't mean he's ready to hang things up. He wants the WWE Championship around his waist once more, but right now he's got AJ Styles to deal with inside of the ring, and the phenomenal one is feeling it here in his first championship defense. AJ, talking about Finn Balor's accolades, we talked about Jeff Hardy's accolades, AJ Styles has a little bit of everything as well. The current reigning WWE Champion, multiple reigns with that title. 
United States Champion, Intercontinental Champion, Tag Team Champion, AJ Styles has had a decorated career over the last six years here in the WWE. And he's looking to keep things going here tonight in this Money in the Bank Triple Threat Contest. Nice arm drag there. It's the danger of the triple threat match. you got to have eyes in the back of your head. As Jeff Hardy taking advantage of Finn's back being turned. But there's Finn with a counter over Jeff. And meanwhile, AJ Styles here. Looks like Finn Balor enticing AJ Styles for a double team. And the WWE Champion is down with it momentarily. But there's Finn Balor. Partnerships not going to last long in a match like this. Especially with the title on the line. And AJ Styles with a nice German suplex to Finn Balor. AJ going to the top rope now. We're going to drop the elbow with Finn Balor getting out of the way. Jeff Hardy's down on the outside. Finn and AJ Styles inside the square circle here in Philadelphia. Finn Balor laying out AJ Styles. AJ eating the canvas. Finn takes down Jeff upon his arrival to the ring. And the Prince is ruling momentarily. Nice maneuvers from Finn Balor. Beating down the WWE Champion. But there's Jeff Hardy. Got to watch his back there. The dangers of a three-man contest. Jeff takes over Finn Balor with that reverse suplex. Finn out of the ring leaves Jeff inside with the WWE Champion of the World, AJ Styles. Nice counter, but there's Jeff with the counter. Sends AJ to the outside. And now the fight gets brought to the outside of the ring. Jeff Hardy diving over the top rope with a swanton bomb variation. The charismatic Enigma is feeling it here. Looking to become the WWE Champion of the World. And send it AJ Styles. Just running across the ringside. Still to come in moments, ladies and gentlemen. The, the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. I guess that's a pro for the men competing for the WWE Championship right now. Is they don't have to worry about a Money in the Bank holder at the current moment. Because nobody holds the contract yet. We're going to decide that in moments here. At the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. We got a fight on the outside between all three of these men. Who's going to be the last man standing and walk out of this thing with the WWE Championship? It's Finn and Jeff Hardy. You know, one thing you notice a lot about this match is they are really, several times throughout this contest, getting AJ Styles out of the way so they can move forward with their fight, move forward with their battle. They want to get at each other, man. There is a grudge still to be settled between Jeff Hardy and Finn Balor. And regardless of this triple threat match, and regardless of the WWE Championship, I'm sure that score is not going to be settled between Jeff and Finn here tonight. AJ Styles in the top row. Tries going for the crossbody, but Finn was able to run out of the way. And now Jeff Hardy going for the powerbomb on AJ Styles. Laying out the WWE Champion. Exciting contest here. Jeff Hardy springboard crossbody takes out the phenomenal one. AJ rolling out of harm's way, and we're left once again with Finn Balor and Jeff Hardy. As Finn, nice suplex to Jeff Hardy there. Whether you like the recent attitude change and the actions of the Prince or not, it has clearly paid him dividends as he has been in the winning ways ever since. And meanwhile, Jeff dazed and confused. Finn Balor, missile dropkick, sends Jeff Hardy into the corner. Finn going to the cover, but AJ Styles breaking up the counter. Breaking up the pinfall, excuse me. Finn almost had Jeff Hardy there. We almost left Money in the Bank with the new WWE Champion. But Finn raising AJ up. AJ counters with the knee. Finn Balor now down and out. AJ with a forearm to Jeff Hardy. What a matchup we got ourselves going on right now for the WWE Championship. I mean, what a match, what a night it's been inside the ring here tonight. So many championships being decided. The women's money in the bank. It's been an awesome night of action. And it's only continuing here. The most prestigious prize in the wrestling business. The WWE Championship up for grabs right now between three Hall of Fame competitors. What a maneuver from AJ Styles there. Vintage AJ if I ever saw something. Finn back in the ring, taking advantage of AJ having his back turned. Sends the champion into the corner. Oh, and a brutal forearm. There's Jeff Hardy now, going after Finn Balor, sending him into the corner. Finn stops himself in his tracks. Float over, DDT to hits flush. Triple threat action. 
on display right here. All three of these men got to watch their own backs. They're all coming swinging. AJ with the drop kick to the back. But now Jeff Hardy's there. Eating a couple more shots from AJ Styles. Vintage AJ. AJ Styles again was the one to dethrone the almighty Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship at Backlash. Well documented how dominant Bobby Lashley was over the last year. AJ Styles so impressive in the weeks leading up to Backlash. Winning that number one contenders tournament to earn the championship match that night and able to walk out of Backlash with the WWE Championship. AJ tried to go with submission a moment ago. Sends Finn Balor into the corner here. You see Jeff very warily try to get back into the ring. Meanwhile, AJ's up on the apron. I think he might have been possibly looking for the phenomenal forearm, but Jeff Hardy's back in there to get him to bring the fight to the Prince. AJ coming in, but Jeff Hardy sidestepped him, and now he's going into the cover on Finn Balor, but AJ able to break up the counter. Able to break up the pinfall, excuse me, again. Finn and AJ going at it, locking elbows. Here's Jeff Hardy with the clothesline now going after the WWE Champion. A lot of action to cover in this triple threat matchup. Nice shot by Finn. Finn and Jeff going back and forth here. Oh, look at this. Jeff Hardy back first in the canvas. And now AJ Styles with another drop kick. AJ back in the fight now. WWE Champion in control. Hits the ropes, spins down. AJ delivering that vintage knee. Phenomenal one's looking good. There's a four on the Jeff Hardy. Now Jeff's down. AJ Styles clotheslines Finn Balor out of the ring. AJ is looking good in this contest. The WWE Champion on a roll here at Money in the Bank. Finn down and out. Jeff Hardy down and out. Meanwhile, AJ Styles looks like he's eyeing up something. Over the top rope. Went for the phenomenal four on variation. Out of the ring, but Finn Balor sidestepping him, and AJ just crashing and burning on the outside. Now Balor sends him into the barricade. And Jeff still struggling to get to his feet right out here at ringside. Meanwhile, Finn and AJ blowing on the other side of the ring. An absolute fight breaking out. Meanwhile, Jeff Hardy looks like he's trying to set up some idea here, clearing off the announce table a bit, but the fight's being brought over to him. Triple threat action once again on display as we got three bodies swinging here. And Jeff got AJ on his shoulders. What's he looking to do? Uh, Jeff Hardy dropping AJ on the hardest part of the ring face first. And talk about a way to possibly knock out your opponent. Just sending a face first on the apron. And Finn Balor swing blade drop kick. And AJ Styles back to back maneuvers from Jeff. And then Finn taking the damage from his challengers here tonight. Vincent and Jeff in the ring. Meanwhile, we got Finn and AJ on the outside, and Finn just lays out AJ Styles once again. WWE Champions down. Finn Balor, Jeff Hardy in the ring. It's well known the triple threat rules. AJ doesn't have to be pinned to lose his title here, so if it's just Finn and Jeff Hardy inside the ring, AJ could very well be walking out empty-handed without even having to be pinned with the WWE title on the line. Finn Balor, coup de gras to Jeff Hardy. AJ luckily is back in the ring, able to break up the pinfall. Drop kick to Jeff Hardy. You should be drop kick to Finn Balor. If AJ was not in the ring, that is exactly what I was talking about. AJ could have just lost the WWE Championship right there after Jeff Hardy eating the coup de gras from the Prince. But nonetheless, Balor's down and out. Jeff is dazed and confused. Meanwhile, AJ Styles locking a hold. He's got him in position. Styles clash from the phenomenal AJ. Into the cover. AJ Styles walks out, still the WWE Champion. What a fantastic triple threat matchup. Finn Balor and Jeff Hardy taking their issues to a whole new level here tonight. The fight between those two men. The coup de grace very well could have did it for Finn, but in the end, AJ Styles, lucky he was in there. And lucky for AJ Styles, he hit the Styles Clash, and that paid him dividends here tonight. A hard-fought victory, well-deserved. Credit where credit's due, the phenomenal AJ Styles walking out 
of this triple threat matchup, still your WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Well, it has been a great night of action, but it is now time for your main event of the evening. It is the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Briefcase number two is hanging above the ring, and the participants are rolling out now. First things first, the self-proclaimed future of the WWE all day. Austin Theory has arrived here in Philadelphia. This is going to be an absolutely extraordinary main event. The following contest is a six-man ladder match. Making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia. Weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. Austin Theory, the self-proclaimed future of the WWE, picking up the victory in his Money in the Bank qualifying matchup a couple of weeks ago over Dominic Mysterio, as well as the Disciple Murphy. An impressive victory for all day Austin Theory. That will the self-proclaimed future make that the present here tonight if he can climb the ladder and retrieve that briefcase that is hanging above the ring and guarantee himself a championship opportunity at the WWE Championship of the World anytime, any place for up to one year. That is what's on the line in your main event here tonight. Austin Theory enters and now we await participant number two. The badass. The dominating Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest is here, and he's looking to pull down the briefcase here in Philadelphia. And from New York, New York, weighing in at 249 pounds, Damian Priest. Damian Priest delivered by help of Dominic Dijakovic, possibly our most impressive and exciting Money in the Bank qualifying matchup in the weeks leading up to tonight's pay-per-view event. On that night on Monday Night Raw, Damian Priest got the victory, of course, over Dominic Dijakovic and punched his ticket to tonight's ladder match. Damian Priest, a former WWE United States Champion, as well as a former NXT North American Champion. But Priest is looking for the biggest opportunity of his career thus far. And that's to pull down the briefcase that he just gazed upon in the ring and earn himself a future opportunity at the WWE Championship of the World. Someone like Damian Priest is a guy who has all the tools to get it done inside the squared circle. But his opponents here tonight are no easy task to topple. And next up is a man who is looking to right wrongs of his career. Mustafa Ali wants this possibly more than anybody. And from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 182 pounds, Mustafa the year was 2019 when Mustafa Ali entered this very matchup. He was atop the ladder. Moments before pulling down the Money in the Bank briefcase, he was met by the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar, who cost Mustafa Ali the victory on that night, and he walked away with the briefcase. Mustafa Ali's recent history is about righting all the wrongs of his career the past few years through the things that he has done inside of the ring, through the retribution, that he thought he needed to cause. The chaos he thought he needed to cause. Mustafa Ali has been so impressive and so innovative and has done such well for his career over the last number of weeks that he is ready to take the next step. And that's involved pulling down the briefcase that eluded him a number of years ago. But here comes the destroyer of the contest, Samoa Joe. And from Huntington Beach, California, Weighing in at 282 pounds, Samoa Joe! It's going to be tough for you to find somebody as smug and in your face as the Samoan submission machine, the inevitable, the destroyer, Samoa Joe. Former NXT champion, former United States champion, Samoa Joe has fought for the championship in the past, but he's never won the WWE title. He has entered the Money in the Bank ladder match in the past, but he has never pulled down the briefcase. Samoa Joe is looking to check those few boxes that have eluded him in his career. An in-ring veteran, one of the most impressive performers in the WWE, one of the most dominant performers in our business today. Will Samoa Joe's tactics and tools be everything he needs 
to achieve victory here tonight in a town that he has a lot of history in, Philadelphia. Four men have entered, but the participants keep on rolling. We got one half of RK Bro, one half of the former World Tag Team Champions. The last man to qualify for the men's Money in the Bank matchup by defeating Bobby Lashley on Monday Night Raw. The original bro, Riddle, is in the house. And representing RK Bro from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing in at 216 pounds, Riddle. Things have been rocky for RK Bro as of late. After losing the World Tag Team Championships, where Riddle got pinned. You look at Backlash, where they lost the rematch for the World Tag Team Championships, where Riddle got pinned. Riddle was able to qualify in singles action for this Money in the Bank matchup by defeating Bobby Lashley on Raw a few weeks back. And if you remember to this past Monday night on Raw, it was Edge, Damian Priest, and Mustafa Ali who picked up the win over Theory Joe and Riddle, and Riddle, again, was the one who got pinned in that match. Your final man to enter, a man who knows the Money in the Bank contract and what it holds very well, the Rated R Superstar Edge has arrived. He was the first man to qualify for this ladder match upon his return a number of weeks ago by defeating Drew McIntyre in an extraordinary main event. Edge is looking to hold the briefcase for the third time in his career. Edge was the first ever winner of the Money in the Bank ladder match in 2005 where he cashed in successfully for the WWE Championship. He took the briefcase off Mr. Kennedy in 2007 and went on to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Now 2022, Edge returns to a match he helped make famous, the ladder match. And not just any ladder match, the Money in the Bank ladder match. Can he win it for the third time or will one of these five men get in his way here tonight? Your main event is underway, the bell has sounded. The men's Money in the Bank ladder match on May the 2nd, 2022. Wells Fargo Center, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Who is gonna be the man to put on that briefcase here tonight? As the brawls have already ensued, if this match is anything like the match that kicked us off, the women's Money in the Bank ladder match, expect nothing but brutality, carnage, and havoc inside of the ring and out. So we got a couple of brawls going on to start this matchup. Austin Theory and Mustafa Ali, two young studs in that ring. Edge and Samoa Joe at ringside, as well as Damian Priest and Riddle at ringside. Edge is bringing out another ladder. Evidently two, he needs three, is enough for the Rated R Superstar. As, as we mentioned this past Monday Night on Raw in that six-man tag team matchup, it was Edge, Mustafa Ali. Oh, with Damian Priest, I gotta cut myself off here. Mustafa Ali springboard tornado DDT to Austin Theory. Austin Theory lands head first right on the steel ladder. The brutality has started early. But as I was saying, Edge, Mustafa Ali, and Damian Priest picking up that win in the six man tag team matchup this past Monday Night on Raw over Austin Theory, Samoa Joe, and Matt Riddle. Those three men building a little bit of momentum heading in to tonight's ladder matches. Mustafa Ali and Austin Theory are on the ladder now. Another ladder is precariously under Austin Theory and he falls off the ladder and lands onto another one. And Mustafa Ali is at the top. He could be looking. No, he went for the moonsault, but Austin Theory moved out of the way. Ali very well could have tried to pull down the briefcase here. I think he knows it's a little early on, but he's going for it anyway now. He's headed to the top. Mustafa Ali has got his fingertips on the briefcase. A feeling he knows very well. As, as we mentioned, he was just moments, mere moments for winning this match a number of years ago. As Ali is just hanging there, all these other superstars going out of edge. Going to be the one to pull him down, and he gets hit with an electric chair. Yeah, this match hot and heavy since the opening bell. And the carnage is already being displayed right out here in front of us. Riddle back-to-back -back suplexes to the Rated R Superstar. 
cannot wait to see which one of these men is going to be walking away from this contest holding that men's money in the bank briefcase. Now we know AJ Styles walking at it tonight with the WWE Championship with this match taking place after the WWE title contest. AJ knows he's going to be at least got another night unscathed as the WWE Champion. And now that extra target on his back as the Money in the Bank holder is just going to be lurking in the shadows. He's going to have their eye on the phenomenal WWE Champion from here on out. As meanwhile, Samoa Joe taking a dump to the outside by the all-day Austin Theory. And that's a nice big boot to Theory. Ladders are in the ring. Bodies are getting spilled in the early going. What an incredible night of action it has been so far, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen Asuka pull down the briefcase. And meanwhile, wait a minute, Edge and Mustafa Ali are battling. A little bit out of our vantage point here. We have some shots at ringside. We know Edge and Ali are on top of that ladder at the current moment. Meanwhile, Riddle's in the ring. And Edge just takes a fall from the ladder. But as I was mentioning, Asuka, oh, wait a minute, Ali's got his fingers on the briefcase again. Riddle's going up there, trying to cut off Mustafa Ali. Got a little bit of a better vantage point now as Mustafa Ali and Riddle are battling atop the ladder. And Riddle takes a fall. Ali withstanding two competitors. Now Ali's back on the tippy top of the ladder. Here comes the Rated R Superstar trying to pull down the briefcase. But Riddle's right there trying to knock things over. Nope. Ali goes down. Edge has got his hands on the briefcase. Now Edge is hanging there. And Austin Theory pulls him down into the power bomb. My God. Hard to keep up with the offense in this contest. But as we were mentioning, if I could finally get through it, earlier tonight, Asuka pulled down the ladder, or excuse me, pulled down the women's briefcase in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. What a contest that was to kick us off. Five championships decided here this evening, and five championships were retained here tonight. Santos Escobar retaining the Cruiserweight Championship over Isaiah Swerve Scott. Sheamus retaining the Intercontinental Championship over Drew McIntyre. We just saw earlier the Viking Raiders defending the World Tag Team Championships successfully over Danny Burch and Ernie Lorcan. Bianca Blair able to withstand. Rhea Ripley retaining the Women's Championship. And AJ Styles will be walking out the WWE Champion. Meanwhile, Ali has once again got his hands on the briefcase here. Ali definitely owes the objective of this matchup. Nobody's going for the briefcase more than him, but both him and Samoa Joe take a deep fall from that ladder. Man, what a matchup so far. Ali, man, he's been getting his hands on that briefcase a couple of times in this matchup. Like we said, we talked about his story, not just over the last few years, but over just the recent, recent weeks, recent months. Ali's been trying to right the wrongs of his career, trying to get back to where he believes he should be. He's been getting a lot of victories. It all kind of started for Ali, building momentum once again in the number one contenders tournament before Backlash where he defeated Seth Rollins. Had a great match against Drew McIntyre. Failed to, of course, win that in the second round. But it was all about the momentum for Ali. We got a Backlash when Ali and Dominic Dijakovic took on Murphy and Seth Rollins. But they got the win on that night. And then, of course, Ali qualifying for this ladder match by once again defeating Seth Rollins. Man, he's had a lot of issues with, or at least I should say Seth Rollins has had a lot of issues with Mustafa Ali getting these victories. Meanwhile, Samoa Joe's on top of the ladder. Everybody's got their back turned. Joe could be about to pull down the Money in the Bank briefcase here. Joe's getting close, but there's Damian Priest. And there's Riddle. Now he's got two men trying to pick him off. Samoa Joe falls from the top. Riddle catches him in an electric chair motion. These men are going for that briefcase, and they are going forward hard. Meanwhile, Damian Priest got Riddle, and the Riddle away with a counter into the neck breaker. Fantastic contest, fantastic night. Who is going to take down the briefcase? What about all day Austin Theory, the self-proclaimed future of the WWE? A man who literally has all the tools, the look, the talent, the ability. In that ring, the presence, the it factor of Austin Theory. Will tonight be his night to truly punch his ticket as Ali is getting close to pulling down that briefcase here. And meanwhile, Austin Theory, the man we're sitting here talking about, looking to take down Mustafa Ali. Ali is now hanging from the ropes. Everybody's kind of distracted. Ali 
He, I don't know. He's got to maybe try to put on a briefcase here. He might lose his grip. I don't know what's going to happen. Ali just falls. He loses the grip and he lands right on the ladder. That is the pure chaos of this contest. Meanwhile, Riddle working on over Austin Theory in the corner. Riddle, as we mentioned, has been a little rocky in his tag team partnership with Randy Orton as of late. Even after Riddle qualified successfully by defeating Bobby Lashley on Raw, we saw Randy Orton was a little frustrated, possibly because Riddle was getting the singles opportunity over him. Riddle was trying to celebrate with his partner, Orton just neglecting a handshake in the middle of the ring. Interesting scenario there. Obviously, Riddle's just looking to pull down the briefcase tonight and get momentum back on his side after more losses than victories lately for the original bro. Samoa Joe, look at this. Taking down Edge in the ring. Samoa Joe, as we mentioned, former NXT champion. Oh, wait a minute, Riddle's climbing the ladder. And Samoa Joe is hot on his tails. Nice shot there, a couple of shots. Riddle losing his grip. The destroyer of Samoa Joe. Meanwhile, Edge trying to climb the ladder. Joe cutting him off. Riddle's dazed and confused on the ladder. Riddle's climbing back up. He's got his hands on the briefcase yet again. He's, he's getting close. He's getting close. Riddle trying to pull it down. Riddle trying to pull it down. No, no, no. Now he's hanging precariously. Edge with a super kick to Damian Priest. Someone trying to grab a hold of Riddle. And Riddle just falls and he lands right on the ladder. Second time in this matchup that somebody, nobody even there to almost break the fall. Just first it was Ali, then Riddle just coming crashing and burning after losing their grip and falling right on the steel of the ladder. Continuing to talk about the competitors in this contest, Samoa Joe qualifying for this matchup by defeating Shinsuke Nakamura, reigniting their rivalry on WWE main event a number of weeks ago. Samoa Joe has challenged for the WWE Championship in the past. He's been in Money in the Bank ladder matches in the past, but he's never got the job done. And he's looking to get that big win here tonight in a town that he's had a lot of history in. In the early days of his career, Philadelphia has Damian Priest with the hit the lights to Riddle in the center of the ring. Austin Theory and Mustafa Ali, they've been going at it a lot in this contest. Ali and Austin Theory. That's a one-on-one -on -one match I would love to see in the near future. As Ali kind of ruling the ring at the moment, takes out Theory, takes out Priest, Riddle's still down and out. Ali's looking to put the final nail in Theory's coffin, coming from the top, 0-5-4 on all day Austin Theory. And a nice snap German suplex to Riddle, Mustafa Ali is feeling it here with the lights on bright in Philadelphia. Riddle and Ali continuing the fight. The Rated R Superstar getting back in there. Joe getting back in there. Priest still a little days on the outside. Samoa Joe's got the ladder. Edge looking to bring the fight to him. And Theory and Ali still going at it, man. These two have been at each other's throats in this contest. And now Riddle, nice suplex to Edge. Trying to keep up with all the action here. The balls are ensuing. We're seeing the carnage. I believe Damian Priest is rocking some color on the face. If I'm not mistaken on that left side, the right side of Damian Priest, I believe, yeah, over the eye, under the eye. Can't get a good vantage point, but Damian Priest is definitely tricking on some blood in this contest. Samoa Joe's got Edge in the fireman's carry position. Oh, look at this power bomb! No, 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 Edge going for a fall, my God! Edge trying to walk it off, but Jesus, what a freaking fall for the Raider R Superstar. That is just a br simple brutality. This is the beautiful brutality. Brutality of this contest. Samoa Joe and Edge still going at it. We all got Joe and Ali now. The final two men in the ring, at least for the moment. Samoa Joe's got something in mind for Ali. Got him precariously set. He's got the ladder, and he crashes him with the ladder. Meanwhile, Priest is back in the ring. Priest and Joe. There's another one-on-one -on -one match I would love to see. These two big men go at it. A matchup of size and strength. Damian Priest ruling the ring momentarily. As Ali's down, Samoa Joe is looking to climb the ladder. Samoa Joe is climbing. Let's see if he can get his hands on it here. And Damian Priest, however, is right there looking to push over the ladder. 
Samoa Joe hanging precariously. Priest catches him in a power bomb right on the ladder that fell out in the leaf of the legs of Samoa Joe. My God, what a fall. And what power for Damian Priest able to catch them on the size and stature of Samoa Joe and send him crashing down on the steel in the center of the ring. Five of our six competitors still fighting it out inside the squared circle. Nice knee by Riddle, taking out all day Austin Theory. And Ali sends the Hall of Famer to the outside. And Ali, big time splash over the top, comes crashing down on edge. Ali bringing ladder number two into this thing. Somebody's got to climb and pull down the briefcase and earn that championship opportunity. Austin Theory dropping the elbow on Damian Priest, the archer. And Ali with a drop kick to the back of Austin Theory, keeping their fight going. That's got to be the biggest rival I'm seeing in this contest. Two men going at it. Ali and Theory have been at each other's necks in this throat in this matchup. And Ali with the 054 yet again on Austin Theory. Damian Priest goes for a rise into the outside by Matt Riddle. Edge is down. Samoa Joe in there with Theory. Sends him out. Samoa Joe is looking to clear the ring, I'm sure, so he can get the opportunity to climb that ladder and take down the briefcase. And meanwhile, Riddle grabbing a hold of Samoa Joe. Trying to bring him into the corner. Joe eats turnbuckle. Now delivering the knees. Brutal shots from the original bro. I'm not mistaken, I believe Riddle's got a little bit of color coming down of his forehead as well. Not the only one who is bleeding in this contest. Davian Priest trying to come in from the top. Ali sidestepped the meanwhile. Somebody got to keep their eye on all day Austin Theory as he's trying to pull down the briefcase here. Riddle's right there. Ali's on the other side. Damian Priest grabbed a hold of Ali here. A little bit busy. A little bit too much traffic inside that ring to pull down the briefcase. But there's Edge, the Hall of Famer, the ultimate opportunist trying to sneak the victory here. He's climbing the ladder, but here comes all day Austin Theory up the other side. Samoa Joe pulling down the red R superstar. Austin Theory's got a hold. Meanwhile, Riddle trying to push him over. Somebody's got to get a hold of Theory here. There's Joe, and here's Edge coming up the other side. Edge with a shot. Ali's going after Theory. Got three men going after Theory, and both Theory and Edge take the fall. Man, Edge just going splat. Ali sending Theory out of the ring. The carnage on display in this contest. Absolute havoc wreaking here at Money in the Bank. Oh, he's been falling on the canvas, on the floor, on the steel. Blood coming from the forehead. I believe you see Edge has got some blood coming over his eye. Ali takes down Samoa Joe. Is there any man in this matchup who hasn't got some blood trickling from the steel of the ladder? Nice power bomb there by Austin Theory. Ali down. Riddle with a nice kick to Damian Priest. It's all about knocking your opponents down long enough so you can climb the ladder unscathed and pull down the briefcase. Meanwhile, Theory and Ali keeping their fight going. We got to see that match one on one soon. Austin Theory and Mustafa Ali. They've been tearing up in this contest, and I got to see what they would do one on one in a wrestling matchup. Samoa Joe pushing off Riddle. The Hall of Famer edges back in the ring. He's grabbing a hold of some of that steel. And Edge is setting up in the ring. He's not interested in using it as a weapon at the moment. He's trying to reach a climb. But meanwhile, Theory is right there. Not sure if that was Theory or Riddle who knocked over the ladder. Somebody did. Austin Theory plants Edge right on the ladder. Man, Edge is taking an absolute beating in this contest. The falls from the top. The falls out of the ring. Moves like that, just eating steel. A feeling that Edge knows very well. After becoming so popular with the ladder match over the years. This is not Edge's first rodeo, but this does not get any easier the more times you enter a match of this magnitude. As the fight continues. Austin Theory, the only one who's down and out at the current moment. And we got a brawl of five inside the ring right now. What a night it has been here on Money in the Bank. An extraordinary pay-per-view caliber event. Damian Priest and Riddle inside the ring. Mustafa Ali looking to join the fight. Somebody's got to climb the ladder and pull down that future championship opportunity. Ali's got it in mind. He sets up the ladder. 
Edge is climbing. Ali coming up the other side here. Which one of these men? Oh, Damian Priest, I believe, unintentionally knocking down the ladder from his fall from Riddle. But Edge is right there. I don't think he got that bad of a fall. Taking out Riddle momentarily. And Austin Theory getting back into the ring. Edge going after the original bro. The man he pinned. And that six-man tag on Raw Monday night following his vintage spear to the gut. And Riddle and Theory going at Edge here. Riddle sends Edge over the top rope and to the outside. And Austin Theory hit the ladder there. Unintentionally cut off his momentum, but still eating steel. And Theory goes for a ride, gets sent to the outside. And Damian Priest goes for the crossbody, but he didn't get all of it. He may have been looking for Edge there, but nonetheless, he ate the floor. Samoa Joe with Riddle over his top and just throws Riddle out of the ring. My God, the falls in this matchup. These men certainly not caring enough about possibly injuring their opponents here. By hook or by crook, they're looking to get it done and get the big opportunity coming their way tonight. We mentioned it at the top of the show. This night is all about opportunity. We've seen plenty take advantage throughout the night. But this is the final one hanging in the balance. Your men's Money in the Bank briefcase. As Riddle's looking to be the one to pull it down. He's climbing the ladder here. Mustafa Ali is on his tails. Edge is coming up the other end. We got Edge and Riddle battling on the ladder. However, Mustafa Ali trying to push it over. Damian Priest counters him out. Hit the lights on Mustafa Ali. There's Austin Theory. Edge shoves Theory off. Oh no, Riddle. Riddle's got to hold the edge. And we got a super clutch for the top of the ladder. What a freaking fall. My God. Two men falling from the top of the ladder down to the canvas below. Riddle's going to follow it up with a finishing maneuver here that may just be the finishing nail in the coffin for the Rated R Superstar. Somehow he's getting to his feet. Edge with a super kick on Riddle. I don't know how these men are still going at it in such late waters into the matchup. Edge climbing the ladder. He wants the briefcase. Riddle's there. Priest is there. Riddle's got a hold. Edge trying to avoid taking another fall. Priest is coming up the other side. Every man is back into the ring. Setting Mustafa Ali. Now he's headed in. We got a ring of six right now. Meanwhile, Ali with the reverse. Ronald Samoa Joe. Austin Theory power bomb to Damian Priest. Off the ladder simultaneously. Riddle pulls Edge off. And Theory looking to lay out Priest. And oh my God, at the same time nearly. Edge and Priest get it laid out from Theory and Riddle on the same ladder. The damage is being done. And Edge is down and out. The majority of our field here is trickling blood. Who is going to be the damn last man standing here tonight? Theory's got Ali up. Look at this. Theory's showing the strength. Ali eating canvas there. It's a simple maneuver, but it could be a knockout blow. Samoa Joe. Nice drop kick. That's vintage to destroy it right there. And Samoa Joe using the ladder to his advantage here. We go for a power bomb, but Austin Theory trying to just hit everybody with some steel. And Samoa Joe uses the ladder. Every man in this matchup besides Riddle. Now there goes Joe. There goes Riddle. We got Priest Theory and the Rated R Superstar in here right now. As Edge isn't interested, it looks like oh, well, Priest is going after him. No, Edge has got a ladder. Priest using the ladder on Edge. Damian Priest with a kick. Priest has got Theory up. Priest hit the lights on Austin Theory. And that maneuver may spell the end for the young man Austin Theory here tonight. Priest choke slam to Theory in the ring. Meanwhile, Edge has climbed the ladder. Edge is trying to pull down the briefcase. Theory can't get over there. Neither can Priest. And Edge has pulled down the contract. My God, what a main event. The carnage, the chaos, the havoc, the brutality in this contest, all for the prize that now belongs to the Rated R Superstar, Edge.
wins it. Here is your winner, the Rated R Superstar, Edge! For all the chaos, Edge pulls down the Money in the Bank briefcase and now guarantees himself a future opportunity at the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Universe Road Episode 20, May 2nd, 2022 is going down in the history books. What a night here at Money in the Bank. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time right here on WWE 2K22 Universe Mode. Good night, everybody. Yeah, I just want to be great.